We're back with the one and only Donald Trump. Donald, let's talk a little politics now. I want you to critique our president, the ultimate CEO, George Bush, on his job as CEO. I would like to see our president get us out of the war, because the war is a total catastrophe. I would like to see President Bush get us out of Iraq, which is a total mess, a total catastrophe, and it's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. It's a mess. Let's critique Bush as a CEO. Okay, right now, you're brought in as a consultant. He is the CEO of the largest corporation in the world, America. Let's kind of dissect him as a CEO. Tell me where he's gone wrong as a CEO. Tell me where he's gone right as a CEO. Well, I don't think he surrounds himself with good people. If you look at uh, his people, Rumsfeld is a total disaster. Uh, the war ha that he's gotten us into is... Ab you know, if you look at Saddam Hussein, he killed terrorists. <laughs> I'm not saying he was an angel, a check but this guy killed terrorists. Now Iraq is a breeding ground for terrorists. That's where everybody goes and to Iran, learn all uh, of the problems. Iran's not looking over their shoulder. And, North, and we have North Korea. We have all these problems, and we're boggled down in Iraq over a war where they have, you know, M1 rifles all pointed at our people. But they don't have, they never had weapons of mass destruction. I, I say this, he has been not good on the war. Okay, well, I want to go back to the CEO. So, doesn't surround himself with Does good people. Rumsfeld himself. Himself. disaster. Hey, look, disaster. Lisa Rice is a very nice woman. Okay. But when she walks in, she hasn't solved any problems. She hasn't solved any problems. When she gets off a plate, she goes to a meeting, she leaves, and nothing happens. Do you think that's good? No. Okay. Surrounding yourself by wrong people, not being nimble at changing courses. Or right. see, like, if you're building a build, building, and all of a sudden there's a labor strike, you're, you're, you you're have making to go moves. Like this, okay. Right. Give me some more CEO critiques. Really kind of as a manager, because that's what he is at the end of the day. A very poor well, you'd have to ask me specifics. I mean, give me a specific. Um, how is he as far as a leader itself, leadership skills? Well, the country is not exactly behind him. Mm -hmm. it's, we don't have a country that's, you know, thrilled with right. his leadership. I've never seen such divisiveness. I have a, a friend who's a very great politician, very well-known politician, and he's, he's been in Congress for years. And he said, I've never seen it. We've always been friends. He's a Democrat. He goes out with the Republicans for years and years. He says, now there's hatred. There's hatred. In other words, they could argue on the floor and then... Internal and, of course, around the, around the world. Donnie, they could argue on the floor and then go out and they could have dinner together. He said, the level of hatred between all of these people is so incredible. He's never seen it anymore. Well, you can't even talk. And if you speak to somebody who's a Republican, it's like, you, you, it's just unbelievable. So, lesson number three, a good CEO forms consensus. Complete disaster there. A total disaster there. Having a plan. I've a never seen a country with so much hate as we have. I'll tell you the other thing. The rest of the world hates us. Well, you know, so after, sure. after the World Trade Center catastrophe, for the first time ever, the world wanted to help us. It's the first time. First time we needed help. But for the first time, we could have had, we could have been the most popular nation ever. And we blew the opportunity. Great CEO. blew the opportunity. Great CEO has a plan. Excuse so me. Let's the world hates us. You go to England. Yes. I mean, that poor guy, he's gone because he followed Bush. But you go to England, the English hate us. A lot of us come from England. We come from these different countries. Other countries hate the Americans. There was no reason for that. We could have had it be just the opposite. Okay. I want to ask you, I, I ask because my theory is the greatest business mind should be running the world. I asked Ted Turner this question, he didn't have an answer. Right now, you are in charge. Why is he doing bison? Okay, forget, we're going to come no, back. excuse me. <laughs> why bison? It's a tough sell. Now, why did you take a shot at him? I love Ted Turner, okay. by the way. I but love you him. took a shot at him. By the way, I love him. I disagree with bison. Hamburger's going to sell better. If you're going into a business, go into the McDonald's business, not the bison business. It's too tough. But you like the Zots. No, no. He may be right. It's probably healthier. It's probably better. I, I ate it on my show. But, I almost puked afterwards. But, but can sorry, I be honest? I just think it's a tough sell. Right. You know, sometimes in life it's a tough sell. <laughs> I like Ted better in the entertainment business. I, think I like liked, him better I in the news business. better in the entertainment business. Um, so wh I'm going to ask you, businessman right now, because everybody, even the Democrats, are saying it's a mess, it's a mess. Nobody has a plan. You are Mr. Ambassador. Fix Iraq right now. Give me the 18-month plan. Well, what you have to do is get out of Iraq. You can do it nicely. You can do it slowly. No, that, that's you can do it Give me, What do we do? I'm putting you in charge. Is it 90 days? Is it troops out tomorrow? Is it a year? Do we set up a, a different kind of... What happens? You're in charge. I would announce that we have been victorious in Iraq and all the troops are coming home. 
and let those people have their civil war. And by the way, no matter if we stay or if we leave, the most vicious person that you've ever seen, he's, Saddam Hussein is going to be like a nice guy compared to the one who's taken over Iraq. Somebody will take over Iraq, whether we're there or not, but probably when we leave, mm -hmm. will take over Iraq. He will make Saddam Hussein, and I say he because it will be a he in this case. This is true. He will make Saddam, in that part of the world, it's going to be a he. Now, we have a bigger story if it was a she. Right. But he will make Saddam Hussein look like a baby. As a CEO, I'm going to give you a, a, a fact that's going to make your skin crawl. Congress just passed a bill or, or legislation authorizing $20 million for an Iraq victory celebration to spend when we bring everybody else and we celebrate. Can, somebody puts that in front of you. You're the CEO now. You're George Bush. Somebody has just approved. $20 million of taxpayer Don't money. Laugh. It may not be the worst idea. I'd like to have it. I just said, announce victory, okay, get so them home. So, okay, Let's so, spend that $20 million. Okay, so just, just, Let's say victory, tremendous. Have a big thing in the streets. Then get out real fast before you get shot. Let's get home. You know so what I hate? Trump I, I, I you would handle Trump. it with the Trump hype. Look, here's what I hate. Iraq has one of the biggest oil supplies in the world. Okay, One, one of the biggest. I mean, just like this incredible. We don't take the oil. What are we doing? We're spending $900 billion. We can't fix up New Orleans. We can't fix up our own country. We have weak educational system. We're spending $900 million. And a friend of mine whose son was just wounded, badly wounded in Iraq, the son came home, said, Dad, they hate us over there. They hate us over there. Now, how do you, how do you, I, I mean, the people that like us hate us. Those are the good ones. Then you have the double hate, where they want to just shoot us. But how do you solve that problem? You've got to get out of Iraq. So when you tell me $20 million for a victory celebration, I think that's sort of so along the Trump actually, line. It's the Trump hype solution. That's very, very interesting. Okay, Donald, stick around. I know you here to sell stuff. We've got The Apprentice coming up in January from L.A., a very different apprentice. I can't picture you with sunglasses on and bathing trunks. We're going to talk to Trump about The New Apprentice when we come back.